since February of 2015 as they are at number 23. That win against Texas on Saturday. And, Fran, you called it. They made big plays in overtime and leaned on Cade Cunningham in some very important spots, as you would expect. Absolutely. The ball's been in Cade Cunningham's at every key moment this season. And it looks like we already have a clock issue on the game's first possession. So they have to put a couple of ticks back up on the shot clock. So last game, Bob, David McCormick went for 24 and 12 against the Cowboys. Mike Boynton told us they did not double team him. They want to, they're more concerned about three point shooting. They go to McCormick and he turns it over on the game's first possession. Oklahoma State friend not only leans on Cade Cunningham, but of late they've been able to lean on Caleb Boone He has really come on. Oh, the young young man the sophomore from Tulsa Coming off a huge game on Saturday against Texas 24 15 and five blocks And there's the rebound run down by Jalen Wilson who's coming off of a double-double 16 points and 14 rebounds and the losing effort against West Virginia McCormick off the feed from Garrett. This is inside. Caleb Boone comes away with the rebound. Nice likely played almost the entire game on Saturday. He's playing with a bad foot. And that's a bad angle to throw the ball into the post right there. Bryce Williams turns it over. And Mike Boynton in his fourth season on the sidelines in Stillwater. Earlier this season, got a win against Kansas. And if they win again tonight, we'll show you the history coming up a little bit later on that Mike Boynton and Oklahoma State would make were they able to get a win tonight. So Chayapaji can't connect. Offensive rebound. Again missing inside is McCormick. Another try. And now traveling called on Brown. Well, two point blank shots by David McCormick. And this is very reminiscent of the way the Jayhawks opened up in Morgantown. McCormick missed an easy one Garrett and Harris as well and uh, Coming up empty can't afford to do that. This Kansas team has struggled to score easy baskets this season Cunningham goes right into the chest of a but comes up short on the jumper Kansas only getting 10 points a game in transition. That's relatively low for what has been an explosive offense under Bill self in 18 seasons Post McCormick up again. He spins into the lane and he misses with the left hand that time. That's just a bad angle. See, Bob, that's just two bad post feeds. How do you think Bill Self handles this team over this next month? Especially considering all of the stress of the pandemic the isolation of the players dealing Fran with players If you're playing for Kansas and you're losing right now It's the first time you've ever lost as a basketball player in your life Yeah, and, and he didn't use this word today, but I'll use it. This team is fragile Bob They need a confidence boost, you know uh, Everybody's trying to get the vaccine. They need a confidence vaccine right now And now Avery Another Anderson sloppy, sloppy again just throws yep. it into the backcourt and Cunningham touches it up for what will already be Oklahoma State's fourth turnover. And it started with two really bad post feeds, but very sloppy. Anxious to see Kate Cunningham in the first half, Bob. He has been notoriously a slow starter in the sense that he looks for his teammates first and his own offense second. And I think that has to change late in the season. Abaji misses the alley-oop to McCormick. Right down the lane. Brown stuffs Avery Anderson. But a foul call. And I think Brown got him on the head. Bill Self thought it was clean, but the, the foul threw on Anderson. Let's take a look. Official waited to blow this whistle, and there you see the contact on the head. And Avery Anderson is one of the most improved players in this league, Bob. The sophomore from Justin, Texas. Quick, defensive-minded, and offensively is starting to really come on. He became a starter 10 games ago. He's been in double figures for seven 
of those 10 games, averaging about 11 a game as a starter, and shooting nearly 50% from the field. And finally, we've got a couple of points scored. Abaji. Yes. Good look. Can't leave him open. He is a confident, confident scorer. As a junior, you cannot leave him. Caleb Boone. Shut down by McCormick. That's about 205 pounds right there going against 250. Nice pass. Wrap around pass from Likely. And a dunk for Boone. No, this is another issue, Bob. This is not a connected team defensively. And you don't see that very normally out of Bill Self's team, especially in pick and roll coverage. Little zone now by Oklahoma State, changing up early in the game, trying to mix up. Brown goes back door. He lost it. Now, this has happened a number of times. Take a look on the pick and roll. You see McCormick stays too late, and there's no rotation from the backside. You, and then and Marcus Garrett is pointing to somebody to rotate over to McCormick, but in fact, he was the only player on that side. Mitch Lightfoot comes into the game for the first time as he replaces McCormick for KU. And there's Garrett jumping in the passing lane, getting a deflection and drawing a foul on Kate Cunningham. Last two games, Kate Cunningham has picked up two early fouls, and Mike Boynton has uh, not had his services for much of each first half. Got two teams right now. Combined two for ten from the field with eight turnovers through the first four minutes Cunningham that pass deflected I nice save by Boone to the corner to likely does not get the rope Lightfoot that's no good. Offensive rebound for Wilson. Back out to Brown. He spots up for three. That's in and out. Good news is they didn't turn the ball over. <laughs> You're a silver lining kind of guy, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yep. Got to back off him, make him shoot it again. Back off way off of him. Likely lobs one. Nice. And a finish by Caleb Boone. That's a second breakdown in pick and roll coverage, but really nicely done out of the corner. And Kalen Boone, we only, we talked about it. He only goes about two and two oh five, but really athletic. Fifteen footer too strong for Wilson. Offensive rebound, Brown. Marcus Garrett lays it in. Let's see how much switching Kansas does tonight. Bill Self's going to try to keep Garrett on Cunningham for as long as possible. But you see the switching. Likely drives it. And it looked like Lightfoot got a piece. Brown the other way. Puts the brakes on in the lane and pays the price as Caleb Boone swats it away. Ice likely the other direction. Kisses it home. There's a great two-on-one right there. Nice job by Avery Anderson to get off center to create the angle for likely Wilson he's rejected as well a held ball Caleb Boone gets another block shot and Oklahoma State has the early three-point lead a free state free fall in KU we will explain 80s the last time they missed the NCAA tournament and it was because they were ineligible in 1989 Bob Shoes and Fran for Schillip on Big Monday, but Fran, there is some optimism if KU can put together a stretch run here. Joe Lenardi with Bracketology still has them projected to be a six seed and be in the tournament. Well, I agree, Bob. They have a lot of games coming up, particularly the next five, where they'll be favored. And remember, all seven losses have come to teams ranked in the Nets top 20. So they're not losing to teams that can't play. They're all tournament teams right now. Avery Anderson makes it a five-point Oklahoma State lead. 
I think the biggest thing for Kansas, listen, this is not a vintage, ta talented Kansas team. They're getting no advantage playing at Allen Fieldhouse. And I think that is a big factor. Everybody is playing with that issue in mind, but certainly Kansas relies on this crowd more than most teams in the country. Little matchup zone again. Right foot, jump hook, too strong. Taps his own miss to Jalen Wilson. Garrett stumbled. Kate Cunningham gets a steal. Avery Anderson forces one up in the lane, and that was stuffed by Lightfoot. A lot of contact there, but Avery Anderson, you see, he's so much more under control this year, Bob. Last year, he was, a, frankly, a chicken with his head cut off, or also a typical freshman, is what we usually call him. This year, much more efficient. He uses his speed well. He's shooting it well. He's an excellent defender. Rondell Walker, the extra pass to Likely. And that's an air ball from Ice Likely. What does it go, as your coaches say? The best thing about freshmen, they become sophomores? Yeah, well, yeah, in most leagues, in some leagues, they leave after one year. But in this case, he's certainly a kid that's getting better and better. Bryce Williams replaces Avery Anderson for the Pokes. And I saw Matthew Alexander Moncrief sighting uh, Baba, and he did not play on... Saturday because of a foot injury, but he's out there tonight He's been in, in the back figures line. his last four consecutive games that he has played as that floater is pure for Marcus Garrett This is a tough pass Boone saves it. Next light foot or check that getting in the passing lane is Tristan and Aruna And there is and a Moncrief making his first appearance of the week yeah, tremendous young man, great energy, a young man from uh, the Toronto area. A chance to see him at the Nike Hoop Summit a couple of years ago. You see Candace doubling the ball out of Kate Cunningham's hands and pick and roll. Watch again. That time they switch. Two Shot Dallas kids. Seven. And a foul call. Jalen Wilson fouls Kate Cunningham shooting a three. Free throws for possibly the number one pick in the draft. When we come back, Fran will have thoughts he's ranked number one, but Fran, it's a little bit more of a muddy picture at the top of the draft than being ranked number one most seasons might lead you to believe yeah. with a player like Kate Cunningham. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not ready to anoint him number one. He's going to be a tremendous NBA player. Uh, you know, Zion Williamson started out on our ESPN mock draft number seven. I said it, number seven in the first one. So these are this is early. I love Jalen Suggs. I think Jalen Suggs brings the energy every single night for Gonzaga. If you're doing nothing on Wednesday on ESPN, watch uh, Jalen Green play. This this young man is going to be a very, very good NBA player. But I don't necessarily think right now today he's automatically the number one pick. I love the kid Jonathan Kaminga, who's with the G League Ignite team and with Jalen Green and Evan Mobley at USC is also at seven feet a really talented player Kate is not going to fail and he's going to be terrific around other good players my one concern about Kate is the passivity in the first half of these games and not taking over Bob I grew up in this big 12 with guys like Blake Griffin Kevin Durant Michael Beasley they came out every single night and tried to grab you by the throat and choke you and I want to see a little bit more out of that from Cade as the end of the season comes along. Because he's gone in about five weeks. Yeah, that was going to be my question. You are the general manager, the lead scout, whatever, of an NBA franchise that could win the lottery. What yep. do you need to see over the next six weeks from Cade Cunningham to stamp him in your mind? As the guy that you got the number one pick and you spend it on a player, you are saying yeah. to your fan base, everyone, we are building our franchise around this young man. Well, he's the safest pick, Bob. He is the safest pick because he's, he doesn't do it. There's nothing he can't do that's not average to above average. He's, the only thing, he's not a great athlete by NBA standards. Skill level, his feel for the game is off the charts. Here's what I would tell you. Uh, in 1994, Glenn Robinson was the number one pick in the NBA draft from start to finish. You know who the second pick was? Jason Kidd. And so Cade may end up being the number one pick, but may not be the best player in this draft. I, I absolutely love Jalen Suggs, who, by the way, 
has never committed fully to basketball until this season because he was a high school quarterback, Mr. Basketball. And I talked to Mark Few a few weeks ago. He said, we've never had a kid more competitive. Jalen Green could be Kobe Bryant. I'm not saying he's that good, but the young man out of Northern California is a phenomenal athlete. By the way, they're all friends. They all were teammates for Don Shawalter in USA Basketball, and they're all going to be hugely successful. I just don't want, I, if I was a GM, I, I'm not, it's too early to make a decision. And I know that because I've talked to about four or five GMs in the last week. Yep. Um, it's a night of potential number one picks here on Big Monday because Gonzaga Absolutely. comes up against BYU as soon as we're done. So we'll watch Cape Cunningham in our game here at the Fog. And then we'll get a look at Jalen Suggs and Gonzaga taking on BYU coming up as soon as we're done. Good post Most likely. Seals inside, gets double teamed, seven to shoot. As Brown tracks him outside. Spin move, likely. A floater. Oh, and out. And McCormick pulls it down. Thing about KU this season is they don't have that pure point guard. Everybody who rebounds it can let it go. You see, they're trying to establish David McCormick. And Aruna feeds McCormick. He gets trapped under the backboard. And the carom goes off his leg and out of bounds for a turnover. Well, remember, this is a guy that had 24 and 12 in the last meeting. And you see right there, Bryce Williams. I'll tell you what's amazing about six foot two Bryce Williams. That's his 18th block of the season. The transfer from Ole Miss. And that time at 6'2, he got a piece of David McCormick. David McCormick has to take Bryce Williams and throw him into the basket. He cannot allow a six foot two guy to do that to him. Oklahoma State's number one in the Big 12 in block shots per game at four and a half per game And they've already gone past that In the first ten minutes of this game There's Caleb Boone in the post against McCormick and Aruna gets a hand in a foul call though That will put Caleb Boone at the free throw line. Well our SEC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the app begins at 7 Eastern Arkansas heads to Lexington to take on Kentucky at Rupp and then it's the matchup of the night in the Big 12 West Virginia Texas Tech number 14 meets number 7 in Lubbock that's a Super Tuesday doubleheader tomorrow night Frank to your point about home court advantage or lack thereof I called the Tennessee game against Kentucky on Saturday evening and Rupp Arena would normally have 22,000. I mean, they would be hanging on the court. And at one point, the first half, it's an eight-point lead for Tennessee. Kentucky flips it to a 10-point lead, an 18-point turnaround against a ranked team at Rupp Arena, and they still lost. And I think so much of yeah. that has to do with the fact that normally, if Kentucky does that in front of their 22,000, or Kansas were to do something like that in this building, it's game over, right? I mean, how many opponents would be able in those cauldrons, those atmospheres, come back from that? And yet Tennessee had no problem because there's only 3,500 people there. Yeah, no question, Bob. If you think about the Blue Bloods this year, they haven't had those early season wins over the guarantee games. Uh, so, and because of the shortened schedule, you know, you don't go into conference play 10-2, and two, you know, nine and three, and then you don't have the home court advantage. So if you look at Bill Self's team, he's played once again one of the toughest schedules in the country. They beat Creighton here, they lost to Gonzaga. Uh, so he's played that monster schedule, but man, I can remember back in October thinking we are gonna have a barn burner when Creighton comes to Allen Fieldhouse. And it, and it shows up that uh, they weren't, uh, there wasn't anybody in the building. Brent, is this just coincidence that we have this kind of a year, all of these Blue Bloods that are unranked, or is this emblematic of the fact that these teams, so many of them, play in some of the best home atmospheres in college basketball, and yet they just don't have that to benefit from this year? Yeah, I, I think that's part of it, certainly. I think, uh, you know, we've said it before, the one and done. You saw, hey, DJ Boston, Bob, in our early uh, mock draft, he was number three. That kid's shell-shocked right now. You watched him the other night. He's a talented yep. kid. But he Bobby. feels like he's a failure now because he's not living up to number three. Bobby with a shot fake. Can't hit the three. Brown an offensive rebound. Gave up his dribble, though. Back outside, Jalen Wilson. Packs in and out. A 
Avery Anderson with the left hand. Gets the roll. Oh, he was under control. Almost traveled, but he came to that little stride stop in there, and I like that. You know, I'm not a big fan of guys running defenders over. You see now Oklahoma State, they played a lot of zone against Texas. They dared Texas to shoot it. Texas 5 for 35 from 3. Bill Seltz always loved to play Marcus Garrett in the middle of the zone. Taylor Wilson, that one-hander in the lane won't go. And here comes Kate Cunningham. Now you see right there, Bob, they crowded the lane for him, and he's not going to have that in the NBA. Brown with a reach-in. And a little something extra. We head to the under-eight timeout of Oklahoma State on top by one on Big Monday. All right, Kev, thanks very much. It is Bob Susan and Fran Priscilla. Big Monday, a one-point lead for Oklahoma State. Bill Self was playing for the Pokes the last time Oklahoma State was ranked for this matchup, and Kansas was unranked. Being guarded by Tad Boyle, coach at Colorado right now. Kate Cunningham that close to getting an assist. Baron Flowers can't hit the three. Got a five-out type lineup right now, so they're going to spread the floor. Ryan Grant Foster in the game after not playing on Saturday as Fran takes us inside the play. Yeah, Bob, I want you to watch now. Watch in transition. This is the NBA is going to be easier for Cade Cunningham. Look at the coverage that he's got in transition. Three sets of eyes on him, crowding the paint. And let me tell you, the difference between the NBA and college is the difference between Spanish and Portuguese. They sound like the same language. They're two different sports. He will have so much room in the NBA to operate because of the players around him and because you cannot hand check anybody. But in college, he's seeing that coverage every single night. Going against last year's National Defensive Player of the Year, and Garrett forces him into a pull-up elbow jumper that Cunningham can't hit. Well, as long as they don't ball screen for Cunningham, Garrett's going to stay on Cunningham. That'll be a great matchup. A a charge. Charge. With a ball fake and a charge as Ice Likely was in position. Not operating at 100% Ice Likely, but one of the toughest guys in this league. And you see right there, Ochai Abaji, he tried to go Euro step, but he did not, uh, he did not cross the Atlantic. Ice likely, though, seems like a coach's dream, Fran, right? Early in the season, he's in double figures in eight of the first 11 or 12 games for Oklahoma State, not in double figures in scoring in any of the last five. With the emergence of Caleb Boone and Avery Anderson, it just seems like he's happy to settle into the back and, and do all of the, the little things. As there's another alley-oop for Boone. And by the way, a great on-the-money pass by Kate Cunningham. And this is something he's going to do extremely well in the NBA at six foot eight. His playmaking ability and finding, quite frankly, better players than the guys he's out here with right now. Juan Harris turns it over. Likely gives it up. Gets it back. Cunningham for three. Yes. It looks like Bill Self wants a timeout with Oklahoma State on top by four. We're coming back in 30 seconds on Big Monday. Terrific ability to get his teammates involved and that was Caleb Boone next year it could be Giannis Antetokounmpo it could be Zion Williamson it could be Bam Adebayo but the thing you do love about this kid he's going to be terrific with really good players around him to me Bob he's the offensive version of J Draymond Green in that the better players you put around him the more his his skills accentuate his teammates abilities Tough pass from Brown to Garrett. Garrett couldn't handle it. Cunningham turns it over. He can get sloppy at times. He's a high dribbler for a guy 6'8. That's not unusual. The drive by Garrett. I love that by Garrett because he was kind of like off a half step from the shot blocker. He, the shot blocker was not able to time that drive. He snuck it up there. That wing jumper, no good for Rondell Walker. By the way, that's a three in the NBA, that pass right there. That shot gets made. With the left hand, Christian Brown. A 
stops the drive. McCormick rejects Anderson. I like that, but David, keep that ball in play. There's no reason to knock that out of bounds. That was going to be a block. Automatically, just block it in bounds. Block it to Garrett. Take a look right here. Don't block it out of bounds when you can come up with a possession. Pass into the backcourt. That's a live ball. Cunningham lets it roll out of bounds. It belongs to Kansas. Fifteen combined turnovers. Neither team shooting over 35% as well. The big fella is 0 for 5 so far, and I think you got to keep working it in there if you can. Dump it down to McCormick. He gets inside and kisses it home. Yeah, got to do that. He's got a decided advantage on Caleb Boone in terms of pounds, about 50 of them. That's his first field goal after five misses to start. You can help off likely because he's not going to shoot the three. Anderson, shot fake on Brown and draws the foul. Avery Anderson will try and tie it at the line when we come back on Big Monday. Come to the paint. They've got to continue to drive it. Let's face it, 15 turnovers, 7 to 6. Mm. The ball handling, passing, and decision making in this first half has been atrocious. Now, both teams have played really hard, but someone's got to be a basketball play. Bob Fran, back to you guys. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Avery Anderson at the free throw line trying to tie it up for Oklahoma State. He's a young man, Bob, that in 2005, the family went through that terrible hurricane Katrina. He uprooted to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and uh, the first exposure to basketball was with Mo Williams, former NBA guard, who has done a great job in the Dallas area in the past, and Avery is really growing up as a player. And Aruna. That's no good. And it's knocked out of bounds by Jalen Wilson. No, you can see, Bob, the struggles that Kansas has had today, somewhat emblematic for most of the year in terms of getting easy baskets. You know, Doak Azabuki, off the top of my head, roughly had 270 dunks in his career. I don't think we've had a dunk tonight yet. At least I can't remember, but they're not getting fast breaks. They're not getting a lot of points off their defense, and they're certainly not getting those easy baskets that Doak provided. What a lineup we have for you on Saturday night. North Carolina, Virginia square off at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Over on ABC, KD, Kyrie, James Harden, and the Nets take on Steph and the Warriors at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And on ESPN Plus pay-per-view at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. It's the UFC 258 main car. That is a lineup, and it comes your way on Saturday evening. Cowboys staying in that zone. It starts out a 1-1-3, ends up 2-3. That's good for Jalen Wilson. Bill Self loves to put a skilled guy in the middle. Sometimes it's Garrett. That time, Wilson using that 6'5", excuse me, 6'8 frame. Soft touch, well done. Good hands by Abaji. You know, friend, we talked to Bill Self earlier today. You kind of chronicled how Kansas is struggling at the offensive end to get easy baskets. He was more, I think, concerned about their defense, but the defense has been pretty good tonight. Yeah, so far, and I think part of that is Oklahoma State's not taking advantage, but certainly this is this is just not a vintage Kansas team on either end of the court, Bob. There's another takeaway. And Aruna got a hand in. Wilson foul. He attacked the basket, oh, and Caleb Mike, Boone will put him on the line. Yeah, Mike Boyne's been mixing up his defenses. A lot of zone tonight, so watch. Watch number 10, Wilson. is going to flash right into the middle of that zone. Caleb Boone, the shot blocker, staying home. 
So now he's going to catch. He's going to look, just simply turn and hit a little eight-foot jump hook. Young man from Denton, Texas, who after a redshirt year has had, I would say, a fairly solid season, Bob. Uh, at times, he has struggled with consistency. But when you look at the fact that he's averaging about 12 points a game as a freshman, seven rebounds, so far, so good. Broke his ankle in the second game last season and took a medical red shirt. And then with COVID, you don't have the normal summer and fall camp to get back into basketball playing shape. So his game's probably still rounding into form. Yeah, there's no question. A 9 2 KU run to put them up three. And there's McCormick. Walling off inside. Strong outlet pass to Garrett. Garrett over the head of McCormick and out of bounds for another Kansas turnover. Yep. Now think about this, Bob. Last year, Garrett gets to the basket because you don't leave Azabuki, right? You don't because he's going to throw it up and dunk it. Garrett gets caught in between. He still wants to throw it high to McCormick who has to catch that pass. It's a completely different animal when you're talking about no dope. Cunningham traffic. That's 11 first half turnovers for Oklahoma State. This is another one of those areas. See, he's complaining about officiating, but Cade can be sloppy with the ball. Again, we're nitpicking on some little things that he'll continue to improve on, but he, he over, I saw him against TCU. He really reacted to the overrated chance. Oklahoma State foul called. And it looks like on the push from behind on McCormick. See, watch this now. I see hands part of the ball. I mean, I, I know he's complaining, but hands part of the ball. That's the rule. And he just picked up his second foul also. When I was at TCU last Wednesday, Bob, once he heard the overrated chant from the TCU fans, you could tell it got to him. And he really played well in the second half, although he brainlocked at the very end because in a tie game, he drove in with 16 seconds to go when he really should have kept the ball out and gotten the last shot. It, it allowed TCU, quite frankly, to win the game. So he's only 19. He's a, he, you know, he's got so much talent. He's six foot eight, 220 pounds. You can see the frustration right now. And uh, long term, this is all good for him. McCormick, again a miss inside. You just can't miss those shots. Likely crosses over. That won't go. Fight for the loose ball, and it's out of bounds off Oklahoma State. The Taco Bell Chalupa, so chewy, so flaky, nothing could make it fit. Well played, Bacon. Well played. The Chalupa just keeps getting better. The Bacon Club Chalupa, now at Taco Bell. Coming up on a minute to go in the first half here on a low-scoring Big Monday so far. Right foot plays catch with Garrett. Good help. Abaji the extra pass to Anaruna. He was off balance. And he shuffled his feet and turns it over. And what we're watching right now both ways is bad basketball. Neither team has been uh, on, on point offensively. Both teams struggling offensively. Uh, terrible decision making. Terrible ball movement. Three for 15 behind the arc from three by both teams. But both teams are only about two turnovers each away from what they average per game. And we still have 45 seconds to go in the first half. That floater is a pretty one. That's knocked down by Flavors. 31 Flavors, Bob. Love that number. <laughs> I'll take Rocky Road. It's been a rocky road for both teams in this first half. Baseball nut? No. I'm going to check the fridge at halftime, see if we have a fudgy the well. <laughs> Garrett, he's perfect from the field, five for five. And now he goes to the free throw line. 
So a very well, efficient Bill, first half Bill for Marcus Self, Garrett. And he told, Bill Self told us today, Bob, Marcus Garrett is playing about as well as he did a year ago, but last year he was the perfect complement to a great point guard and a great big man, Marcus Garrett, in many ways is Draymond Green. You know, if you took Draymond Green and you put him on the Orlando Magic right now, I'm not sure he would be as valuable as he would be playing with the great players he's had in Golden State. And Marcus Garrett is the, the, the glue, the super glue guy. You see what Mike Boynton's doing. He's going to bring Cade back with Now, big thing here for Cade Cunningham, and I'm sure he's quite aware. You've got two. We want the ball in your hands. But you have to be very judicious in your decision making so that you don't pick up that third foul. Love the idea that he's back. Let's just see a little maturity and decision making right here. Jason Garrett, eight to go in the half. Crosses over. Five seconds. Whips one cross oh, court. Rondell beautiful. Walker rims out a three. And it will be a three point lead for KU at halftime. Here on Big Monday, 28-25, Kansas leads at the break. Time for the halftime report. Back to the studio and Kevin Nagani. I mean, is it on him to create or you want his teammates to get him more in a flow and maybe help produce some of that offense from a team perspective? No, he'll get it going. He's, a, he's, a, he's their primary ball handler. He kind of senses the moment. He feels the game out. Is, is what coach Boynton has told us in the past and I think now he's hopefully he's feeling it out enough that uh, He can now do what he's done in many second halves this year, which is take over this ball game for Oklahoma State And for Kansas who helps out Marcus Garrett as we just saw he was five for five From the field in the first half his teammates five for 26 and again, a little more zone. It looks that way unless they show it. No, they're in zone. Two, three. Look for somebody like Garrett in the middle. Kristen Brown starting off the second half on the floor, playing with three fouls, feeds the post, and a chance for a three-point play for David McCormick. Well, that comes in handy for David McCormick in first half, one for seven. And you see Boone just hanging all over David McCormick and he goes to work Bill Self tried to establish McCormick early in this game He came up empty off to a good start to start the second half the junior from Virginia Beach Norfolk, Virginia the Tidewater area Second foul on Caleb Boone and This is the largest lead of the game for either team as Kansas has a five-point advantage six pardon me Avery Anderson scoops with the left hand and gets the soft bounce. Well, the floor is going to open for Anderson because there's so much attention on Cunningham. That last possession, they doubled the ball out of his hands. And Avery Anderson, like a four-on-four -four power play in hockey, he loves the open space. Abaji, that's rejected by Boone. Saved by Cunningham. Oh, that's a nice step. Crossover yeah. stripped away from Bryce Williams. Brown comes back the other way. Christian Brown not making shots, but he's done some really good things defensively. Mid-range jumper for Jalen Wilson. And Cunningham draws the foul on McCormick. And Christian Brown leads his team in floor burns. And he is not afraid to get his nose in there. Take a look. Rips that ball right out of Williams' hands and gets that ball going the other way. And Jalen Wilson with the basket. Good solid defense by the young man, Christian Brown from Burlington, Kansas. I love the story about Christian Brown. His whole family played at Missouri. His mom and aunt both played at Mizzou. They were both the high school player of the year, Miss Show Me Basketball, his uncle Mike played at Missouri, and his mom, yep. when they moved him into Kansas, she slid a t-shirt or two from Mizzou <laughs> into the drawer Dirty trick. that he was unaware of, right, just to make sure he knew where, he, where his roots were, as McCormick scores inside. Very dirty trick, but uh, one thing Bill Self likes right now is David McCormick starting to heat up inside.
That's a good matchup right there. Look at the crowd around him. Three white jerseys. Ten and to shoot. Trap him. He gives it up to Caleb Boone. Boone shovels one inside the lightly. That's challenged by McCormick. Taken away by Garrett. Well, I like what Bill Self's doing. He's trapping Cunningham in ball screens now. Jalen Wilson drives it. And that's out of bounds off Wilson. Take a look, Bob. So you'll see that double team, and that, that means Cunningham is going to make the right play and give it up. And as I said, I've said this a couple times, I'll say it again. Next year, he's going to give the ball up to NBA players who can do something with it in short roll or kick outs for open threes. Right now, there's more traffic in there than in uh, on 42nd and Broadway at rush hour. There's a three from the yep. wing for Kate Cunningham. He'll sense that they need his scoring, and you'll see him start to at least pick up his offensive output. McCormick from 12 feet. That won't go. And it looks like a foul is going to be called on Ice Likely. He got tangled up with Garrett. Let's see who they have the foul called on. But Gabe Cunningham, he doubles his production in the second half, generally speaking. No, he, he has a sense of trying to get his teammates involved early in games. And then certainly he's been the hero a number of times this year. My issue with that, Bob, is because he's so unselfish. You're the best player in college basketball, last, at least the number one pick in the draft. You know, Kevin Durant or Michael Beasley, some of the guys that played in this league, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna wait till the second half. Oklahoma State needs Kate Cunningham doing it right now, and in the beginning of the game. Garrett, kind of a lazy pass to the corner, and that's another Kansas turnover. Checking in for Oklahoma State. I was watching Jalen Suggs last week, and they were playing, I think, Pacific, and it was a close game. And late in the game, Jalen Suggs took over the game. Every time I've watched Jalen Suggs this year, the young man from Gonzaga, from Minneapolis, and he'll be a top-five pick, the energy level, the effort level, the competitiveness is off the charts. Cunningham, a little more assertive here, but McCormick grabs the rebound off the miss. And you'll see the same thing from Jalen Green if you watch those G League Ignite games. How about that play? Kate Cunningham yep. blocks Abaji, takes it away, likely drives it. He's rejected. That'll be a held ball again. Good defense from ball. Jalen Wilson. And when you talk about Kate, he's got that seven foot two wingspan. Takes advantage of it. Take a look, take a look right here. This is a point guard. Good job right there getting all ball. See, he's got that. Uh, he's a unique player because as a foul, he is a playmaking wing. We'll see what he can put together in the second half with his team down. Watch. Well, I'll tell you what he's going to likely add too, and that's an NCAA tournament appearance. Because the way things are going right now, Bob, the, the uh, Cowboys are appealing the NCAA's postseason ban for this season. But no date has been set, and, and I have no doubt that as long as they take care of business, the NCAA, as we creep closer to Selection Sunday, is not going to keep this team out of the tournament this year. Will they act on the postseason ban appeal? They will, but I believe that this young man will play in the NCAA tournament this season. Will be a threat if that indeed is what happens as likely picks up his dribble shut down by McCormick Avery Anderson behind ah. the back a little too ah. tricky and that'll be a backcourt violation as he missed likely yeah not a good decision Mike point and said get him out so on point and uh, take a seat young man we don't do that you can tell him <laughs> we're now in field house I've done that before. Get him out. He probably won't be in Chateau Bow Wow for long because <laughs> he is they need a him. valuable player to this team. No question. Good cut. Backdoor nice cut. cut. Yep. 
Yep. Even with McCormick up top, they can go five out, and you see that nice dime that McCormick dropped. Hesitation dribble. That floater don't, won't go for Cunningham, and it's knocked out of bounds by Ice Likely. Take a look. Five out. Well, already the back cut. There it is. For Oklahoma State. He played a lot. How about 39 Three. minutes and 12 points for Coach Self? You know what you notice about that? No three-point line back then. Solid performance by the point guard from Edmond, Oklahoma. No One of the best line. players. Was, wasn't even color yeah. photography. You know, I don't know if the shot clock was in then yet, Bob. <laughs> I can't, honestly. And if it was, it was, was 45 seconds. I think there was a ladder to pull the ball out of the pooch basket. I was on a Mike recruiting... Lee. Yeah. I was on a recruiting visit on a Sunday afternoon, Bob, after we had won the Mid-American Conference Championship at Ohio U. And we're in a kid's home in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who's now, by the way, the coach down at IMG, John Rhodes. And Bill Self and the Oklahoma State Cowboys won the Big A Championship, went to the NCAA Tournament that year. With Matt Clark and Leroy Coombs, Cowboy fans remember that team, the older ones do. Cunningham for three. Well off the mark. See if they can keep, continue to go to the big fella. Jalen Wilson. He can't good look. Yeah, good look. Good pass by McCormick. Just not, not knocking shots down. Now Walker. Way out of control at the rim. That pass yeah. wide of Brown for another Kansas turnover. Man, we've got two frustrated coaches right now. Big 12 yes, now. Yes, we do. On ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. Tonight, catch the Kansas postgame show after we're done. And Tuesday, Texas takes on Kansas State at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And Saturday, a good one between the Sooners and Mountaineers. Number 12 against number 14 at 1 Eastern, noon Central. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today. ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Oklahoma State getting good looks, just can't knock them down. And nine point deficit feels like 15 right now. We were talking about it earlier today how sometimes water ends up just finding its level and things average out. How many wide open looks did Texas miss on Saturday? You called the game in their double overtime loss to Oklahoma State. They were the beneficiary of a lot of wide open misses on Saturday afternoon and now they're the team tonight that's getting looks and just can't knock them down. Yep, to, your, to answer your question, Texas missed, they missed 33 point shots. They made five and yet they lost a double overtime. Here's Brown, Brown man. With an offensive a, rebound. Yep, Christian Brown gets a lot of stuff done away from the hoop. Jump hook won't go from a corner. Team to the wing. And there's a three that goes down off the Cunningham feed. Now that's the one Time guy. Bryce Williams. Yeah, he can really heat up. He transferred from Ole Miss. He actually played against Oklahoma State in Brooklyn last year when Oklahoma State whacked the Rebels. And he transferred here for his senior year. Nice move. Cormick with a chance for an end one. Yep. Now, and a Moncrief's only six foot eight. He's coming off of a, a foot injury. He didn't play against Texas, but we have seen time and time again Bill Self trying to feed the big guy. And of course, this season, David McCormick has probably been as consistent as any time in his career. 16 points a game in his last nine, shooting close to 60% from the field coming in. And the young man that when we watched him three years ago, he was not going to be one of those one and done guys. But, uh, you know, in the mold of the Landon Lucases and the Travis Relifords and the Brady Morning Stars, one of those four-year Kansas Jayhawks. Is that double team? A blocking foul will be called on the corner. Yeah, David's got to move his feet a little bit more. He did a nice job. Take a look right now. He never really got those two feet down and established. What he's got to do there 
If he can't get in front, just give ground and back up. Only his first foul. So he's just heading to the bench to get a little breather before the under-12 timeout. Double team on trap. Cunningham. Yep. Likely steps up Bryce Williams. That's in and out, but the back tap keeps it alive. Bryce Williams, finger roll. Oh, nice block. Right foot may have gotten a piece. Yep. Mitch has done that throughout his career. He's got long arms. That's a turnover. Rondell Walker. Tough pass to Likely. He handles it and finishes with the left hand. When I said it Saturday, when Oklahoma State won ugly in double overtime, they're still ugly, but right now they're in this game. Cunningham off the miss. He'll cross over. And oh, man. Finish. Yep, that's six foot eight right there. That's where he excels. We talked about having space in the open court. They've been crowding him all night. Some fun with this, and Bob, you you know you know that Grant Hill was the number one overall pick in the draft, right? No, don't answer that. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was the third pick in '94. It was Big Dog, Glenn Robinson, then Jason Kidd. Grant Hill was third. Turned out to be a tremendous NBA career. Had he not gotten hurt, he would have been, I think, one of the all-time greats. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he was just one of those injury-prone players that you always wondered what might have been had he been healthy his whole career. Yep. But again, you know, in, in Cade's case, I know he, you know, point guards, two guards, small forwards, that's kind of gone out the window. I think he's a playmaking wing to me. Bill Self would call a guy like that a three guard. Shot clock at three, Brown for three. Got it. First triple for Christian Brown. See the traffic, they're going to double it out of his hands. Likely, they have double dribble. Did he touch it with both hands? And that was a cross court call made by Doug Sermons. Let's take a look right now. Well, he did. He put that. Look, it looked to me he put the second hand on the ball, and that's what Doug Sermons probably saw also. Too easy. Instead of foul called on Rondell Walker. That's I, I like the young players Oklahoma State has. Rondell Walker, certainly Matthew. Alexander Moncrief, the sophomores, Avery Anderson gets better. It's a good group. Good group to build on as Cade will depart next year. Marcus Garrett stripped away. And a foul called on Garrett as he charged into Bryce Williams. Yeah, this is a common inbounds play where they hand it off to Garrett. Here he comes. Man, I didn't see that. I didn't think there was enough contact there to call that foul on Marcus Garrett. Obviously, Bryce Williams disagrees. I did not see arm extension there. That's Garrett's first. Cunningham a straightaway three. Abaji grabs the loose ball. Gives it up to Likely. That's ice playing really on a, a leg and three quarters right now. He's not the same player he was early in the season. Garrett. Wild reverse. Offensive rebound and traffic. Lightfoot. And he draws a foul. Now keep your eyes on Isaac Light, Likely right here. Take a look. Ball's loose. Little outlet. And just a, it's a silly mistake by a junior. Remember... Ochai Abaji threw that ball away earlier in the second half right to Bill Self and You know Ochai has got to do a better job right there of being aware of the situation Of course we remember it two years ago Bob when he was red shirting and Bill Self broke the red shirt Broke the red shirt took it off of him when when uh, Doka Zabuki was hurt up at Iowa State, finished strong. Thought he had an okay sophomore year, but he's been really consistent as a junior. 
And Phil Self told us he was the 365th ranked player when he committed to Kansas, Ochai Abadji. I wasn't even sure they ranked players down that far. Yeah. yeah. Cunningham hits the underside of the backboard through all that traffic again. And then a foul called on Oklahoma State as Brown grabbed another rebound in traffic. And here is our SEC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the app. It was another loss at home on Saturday for Kentucky at Rupp, and they will look to bounce back against Arkansas at 7 Eastern. And then at 9 Eastern in Lubbock, the Big 12 gives us another ranked versus ranked matchup. Number 14 against number 7, West Virginia takes on Texas Tech. And you know who you'll see tomorrow night? Moses Moody, a former teammate at Montverde Academy of Cade Cunningham, Bob. Moses is having a very good year. And I think uh, if you look at this team now, this is unbelievable. Kevin Boyle used to coach up at St. Patrick's in New Jersey. All four of these high school teammates, if they come out, and I think they will, will all be drafted relatively high. And I'm going to add three more guys that did not play with these guys. But Sa Sandro Mamukelich, really from Seton Hall, Montverde. Marcus Carr from Minnesota, Montverde. And Philip Petrusev, former Zag, who's now playing in Europe. All seven guys could be drafted from Montverde Academy. Running hand working the offensive glass and a chance for a three point play. Love that he stayed with it. He missed the first one. And again, staying with it. Good effort. Quick jumping. Take a look now. He's going to go wedge in. Garrett, first time no go, second time stays with it. He's going to get a chance to get three right there. Abaji committed the foul, his second. Cunningham well, has 15. Yeah, 10 again had... in the second half, doubling up his first half production so far, but now a foul away from the ball. And that's been his M.O., and it's worked most of the time. He senses that he has to take over, and I will tell you right now, he has to take over the next 9.33 if, if Oklahoma State's going to win this game. You know, I know Kansas fans have heard this before, but Danny Manning once told us that the greatest performance that he can remember in Allen Fieldhouse was Kevin Durant's 25 points in the first half when Texas came in here his freshman year. Kevin got hurt in the second half, but to me, that's still like the standard for an opponent coming into this building and putting on a show. Cunningham fumbles the dribble. Barrett all over him. Now it's Rondell Walker. Shooter. Labor step back three over the backboard and it's corralled by McCormick. Jalen Wilson simply lost it. That, that is driving Bill Self crazy right now. You know, Bob, Kansas is up and they've got nine minutes to go. They're not dead yet this season. They're favored in the next four games after tonight. They got Iowa State twice. They've got Kansas State on the road. Texas Tech will come in here. A mild favorite, I might add. The Jayhawks. All seven of their losses this year are to top 20 net teams. Rondell Walker to Cunningham. And the traffic again. Some contact, no call. Brown's got the loose ball. Abaji, quick trigger for three. Comes up short. And Rondell Walker, the freshman with the rebound. Yeah, big time rebound. Cunningham wastes no time. Muscles one up through Brown. It won't go. The back tap to Walker. Oh, Skip boy. pass. Nearly intercepted, and instead it ends up being a flavor's wing three. Oh, yeah. This guy's gone to four schools in four years, believe it or not. But the one thing he's done at all four places, knock down the three ball. He's a transfer from Cal Baptist. Brown allows the flyby. That's a triple. The answer. 
Now that was really well done by Christian Brown. Because he's on that line, defenses will close hard. He's used to it. Little eyebrow fake. Let the defender fly by and knock it home. Brown's got nine rebounds to go along with his 12 points. Cunningham splits a double team. Old school floater is there. Nicely done. Avoided the charge. That high paint floater. Got to have that in your arsenal. Oklahoma State is shooting 31% from the field, and yet they're only down by five. Make it seven on the turnaround by Jalen Wilson. Okay, he's got 12 in the second half, and it looks like he wants to start to take over. And how about this matchup? This will be fun. Garrett and Cunningham. Falco. That's on Garrett. It'll be free throws for Kate Cunningham when we come back down the stretch on Big Monday. The first African-American coach to win a major collegiate championship in 1984, winning it all with Georgetown. You know, Will Robinson. One of two African-American head coaches in the Big 12, along with Shaka Smart. Yeah, Will Robinson, you know who he coached? Doug Collins. Nice. Strong drive by Likely to make it a five-point game. And you see the towel that Mike's worn all year at NABC honoring the large father. And he was certainly larger, larger than life, John Thompson Jr. I got to coach against him. He's a gentleman. Formick. Nice yep. fake. Finishes with the left. You love it. You work, I, I love the way Bill Self comes out of every timeout, figures out where your weakness is, Says we're gonna go at it. He did that with McCormick. Rondell Walker draws a foul. Now, this is vintage Bill Self bully ball. We've seen it through the years. Watch, look how high he seals the big guy up the lane. In fact, it's Cade Cunningham. Does a really good job of taking Cade off the block and up the lane, and that allows that easy pass over the top. Hey, by the way, Bob, have I told you about Kevin Durant's performance in here? Once or twice. I've gotten a few texts from friends of mine around the league, and they want him, want him to remind me that Buddy Heald once dropped 46 in here, and that Anthony Peeler dropped 43 in here when Mizzou was in the Big 12. So you are correct, folks. But KD was pretty good for half. Kate still guarding McCormick. Abaji thought about a three from the corner. McCormick oh, has sucks to yeah. Jalen Wilson. Now, Kate was not able to use his 7-2 wingspan because in backing off of McCormick, he allowed McCormick to see right over the top. Now, take a look now. When you, when you back off... Right here, you're going to stay home like that. That's going to allow McCormick at 6'10 to throw it right over the top. As a coach, I used to like to pressure that guy. Even if I wasn't concerned about a shooting, I didn't want to make him an accurate passer. Oh. Tip for Likely. Just off the mark, off the Walker miss. I'd go inside again. Hit an angle and see if you can post Cunningham. Instead, Garrett drives it that close to a three-point play opportunity. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, we saw that a lot last year. Bill Self created what we call a speed angle for Marcus Garrett to get downhill with that right hand. He did it with Dotson a lot. And as we said earlier, last year you had to be so concerned about leaving Azubuki. Garrett would just throw it up there and lob it. But a good second half by David McCormick, who is... Uh, has been the go-to guy along with Garrett tonight. The last time these two teams met, when Oklahoma State won back earlier in January, they had 37 fast-break points. Tonight they've got six, so a totally different defensive performance in this game for KU. And there's a hand in and a steal by Abaji. He lost it. Pretty good hands by Avery Anderson to deny the layup. And to your point, Bob, Kansas only had eight fast break points in Stillwater. 
That's as huge a disparity as you'll see all season from Kansas. McCormick again seals inside on Likely and Likely commits his fourth foul. Now remember, David McCormick is playing the best basketball of his three years in Kansas. First half, one for seven. Struggled, he missed some easy ones. Second half, he has dominated the paint. Some good. In this game, now he's got 17 and a chance to add to that. He's got 16 in the second half. Yeah. Or 15, pardon me, in the second half, looking to add to it. But he's scored 15 or more now, five games in a row. He's also the fourth best free throw shooter in the Big 12 for the big guy at 83%. So he's not the, that big man you want to hack a shack with and put him on the free throw line. It burn you there. A scramble Sloppy. for it. Yep. Cunningham bounces it off the knee of McCormick, so and a chance for Oklahoma State to reset. Anderson wastes no time. It's a three. He gets better. He gets better and better. He was two for 26 a year ago from three. By the way, to your point about McCormick, he now leads the Big 12 at three-point shooting this year. He's one for one. Garrett inside, back outside. Wilson can't hit. Offensive rebound, McCormick. Again with the left hand. Yeah, great footwork, too. Took that crab dribble to the middle. The defender cut him off, and he nicely pivoted away from pressure and used that offhand. Really well done. Time running out. Anderson to flavor. Offensive rebound, likely. And timeout called by Mike Boynton. 65-57, and boy, has David McCormick Fran become a big factor in the second half. Hey, this dude could be player of the year. Every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. Number one team in the land coming your way in just over 10 minutes against BYU. Bob, Fran, back to you guys. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Number one resides, of course, at Gonzaga. Number two resides right here in the Big 12 with Baylor. And I'm not sure, Fran, who number three should be. It seems like those two yeah. teams are one oh, and one A, and then it's everybody else. No question about it. In fact, Mark Few told uh, Dan Dockett on Saturday that uh, he thought Baylor could easily have been voted number one today. And you could make that argument. I don't think either coach cares. Both of them are friends. And, and uh, certainly nothing matters. What we do know is we'd love to see them play on April 5th in Indianapolis. Misses at the line. We'll have another full day of Cowboy Troops across all our networks on Saturday. And we'll start in the Big Ten with Indiana taking on number four Ohio State at noon Eastern. And that game is available on ESPN and the app so you can watch anyway. Aaron Flavors comes back in the game for Oklahoma State. As I'm sure Mike Boynton knows. In these last three and a half minutes, he's going to need some threes to be a part of their attack. Yep. They're going to come from behind. We call that a comeback game. Can't waste a lot of time. you got to go quickly. Cunningham. He'll go to the line. Good strong move right there. I'll take that. Get to the foul line. Set your press up. Cormick second. And both teams are now over the limit. Hey, Bob, well, uh, Kate Cunningham shooting these free throws. Uh, I just want to send, and I know everybody in the Big 12 and everybody in college basketball wants to send their condolences to the Hill family. We lost Lou Hill last night. Um, died in his sleep on Sunday after coaching Saturday night at Rio Grande Valley. Lou played at Wichita State. He's a Mount Vernon kid. I watched him in high school. And the best thing I could say about Lou Hill is he had incredible charisma um, we all miss him everybody in the basketball community is stunned and shocked and he coached for lon kruger helped recruit buddy healed and put that program together and we're just thinking about the family tonight I lost way too soon hey, 
For the third time this season, McCormick scores at least 20 in a game. He's up to 21. And a big reason why, when he goes to the free throw line, he makes at 83%. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much duplicated the game he had at Stillwater. He had 24 and 12, and Mike Boynton did not want to double-team him in that game. He has not double-teamed him tonight. Kansas has only made four threes, but I kind of feel like down the stretch of this game, David McCormick has been has been the dominant uh, player in this game. One field goal in the first half, and as you mentioned, up to 22 right now. for Avery Anderson on the yeah. rebound. Great pass. That's a three in the NBA. He has great strength and vision. He can throw that cross-court pass very easily. But you don't get an assist for a miss on a great pass. Kansas handles the pressure of Oklahoma State well. Now they've got it in Garrett's hands with five to shoot. McCormick. To Wilson, Brown in the corner, to toss one up, gets the roll. He knows that corner pretty well. He's made a few of those this year from deep. A turnover, Abaji tosses ahead to Wilson. That's blocked by Cunningham from behind. Abaji swoops in, and it's a blocking foul on Cunningham. What a play by Kate Cunningham, though, to deny the initial dunk. Well, this shot clock is running down, and Christian Brown had the presence of mind to just get it up on the rim. He got the friendly roll, and then take a look right here. That's six foot eight with a seven-two wingspan, and give him credit for coming out of nowhere and making a great defensive play. Then he was in the restricted area and committed his fourth foul. Double figures for Ochai Abaji for the 18th time this season in 20 Kansas games. Three on the way for Cunningham. It's down. 143 to go in the game and a timeout called by Mike Boynton. Well, Abe, Abe Lemons his performance taking a back seat to the 22 points and eight rebounds. A difference maker. And well, I said it. Yeah, and, and Bob, listen, there's, there's, a, there's, a, it's admirable to be a guy that wants to really step up in the second half. But frankly, they're going to lose another game that he was just okay in the first half. I, I think personally, he has to take over the game from the start. That's just me, and I get all the attributes. I've watched him in high school. He's a Dallas kid. He's going to be an excellent NBA player. That's what I want to see him do for this Oklahoma State team at the end of the year. Puts up a three here. Got it. That's Maybe great. Oklahoma State isn't dead yet as they've got yeah. it down to single digits. Well, well that's great. To go. But I want that in the first half. Why can't I have that in the first half? I'm sure Mike Boynton's asking the same question. Brown tied up in the backcourt. And Bill Self, I think, may have called the timeout. in Oklahoma State playing a play-in game in the first round on Wednesday night. And that just shows you the depth of the Big 12. Yeah, how about that? You got an NCAA team who's going to play on Wednesday. Backcourt foul on Avery Anderson. And will put Marcus Garrett at the line. Yeah, have to do that. Have to stop the clock and hope for a miss. Come back and get a two or three. And Bob, one other thing about... And, and, we also lost uh, Tom Kanchalski today. The glider was the guy, everybody in America knows him as a recruiting guru. Longtime New York legend. Um, I know you knew him, knew about him. And uh, just a wonderful man who did so much for thousands of kids 
who play high school basketball help many of them get to college so it's been a tough couple of days with losing Lou Hill and the great Tom Konchalski and uh, I know we're all, all of us in the basketball community are sending our prayers out to their families in New York for a while the MSG Network I called some of the public school championship games and then, yep. even calling the McDonald's games for ESPN as Cunningham fades away Tom Kachowski was every one of those big high school events and he's he was a fixture and uh, he, will, he will certainly be missed didn't have an enemy Well, in about five minutes, as things shape up right now, this is going to be Kansas's 13th win of the season. Now, there's one, I guess, Achilles heel tonight that Bill Self will look at. Again, his bench didn't come through for him, but his starters certainly did, as all five starters for Kansas are now in double figures. He's got two bench points. And the starters have accounted for everything else. Very similar to Saturday when they had four bench points and all five in double figures, but that was a loss. Anderson forces up a wild one. McCormick another rebound, and he's fouled by Puma. That's the tenth rebound for David McCormick. So that gives him double double number five on the season. As he's got a twenty and ten game working tonight. And we talked about the great game in Stillwater, which was a loss for Kansas. But uh, if there's a third meeting, Mike Boynton's going to have to probably change up the strategy of single covering David McCormick. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi. I want to remind our audience we will have Gonzaga BYU after the finale, final, I should say, in Kansas. At the moment, the number one team in the land, that game. On the road on ESPN News, there is Tip. They're up 3 0. Back to you. All right, Kevin, closing moments here. Kate Cunningham is fouled. 32 seconds to go. Well, he's adding to the 24 points. Remember, five in the first half, already 19 in the second half. Grab nine rebounds tonight, one assist. But, Bob, he, he threw some passes that are going to be baskets in the league. And the other thing about this guy, he's certainly not a perfect player, is that the space in the league will really help him. I think there'll be some issues defensively when he's he's not going to guard small guards. I th I see him as a point wing. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a point forward wing, whatever you want to call it. The league is now so versatile it won't matter. It looks like Oklahoma State may wave the white flag, and Kansas will get a home win against a ranked team, and that is much needed for Bill Self's group, having lost five of seven coming into tonight to beat Oklahoma State right off of a win for Oklahoma State against the top 10 team on Saturday in Texas. So a good win for KU. 78-66, it looks like, is going to be the final, although with one more second to go. And Bill Self hasn't had many moments, at least of late, for him to smile as the final seconds come off the clock that he does tonight. Yep. So 78-66 is your final Kansas over Oklahoma State. For Fran Fraschilla.